Since Entertainment Tonight first introduced you to Playboy's October centerfold, she's become a media darling. But there is so much more to Victoria's Drock, we thought we'd show you that as well. Not only does Victoria Drock have a PhD in psychology and a law degree, she's also the 2004 Penthouse Pet of the Year. Victoria, congratulations. Thank you. Now, I, I want to start with the smart stuff, okay? You basically graduated college at 18 with a 396 QM. Yes, I was the first uh, Ukrainian exchange student that came to the United States at the age of 16, and at 18 I had my college degree. That's amazing. And now you also have a law degree, and you're about to get your PhD in psychology. I already got my PhD. You got your PhD yeah, in psychology. Yeah, last year, last May. Victoria Zadrok was living in communist-run Ukraine and got a lucky break one day, an academic trip to America. She made the most of that opportunity and became a doctor of clinical psychology. Dr. Victoria Zadrok, a.k.a. Dr. Z, is the body and brains behind the advice column, Vices and Vanity. There is a part where it's just Q&A, I answer questions. Um, then there is the Dr. Z's top ten. Then there is a product review, which is a different product every month. Women are really confusing to men, so I want this column to be um, like a guide to women, but in a way that, that men can relate to. I call myself Dr. Z, the Dr. Ruth of the Z generation. With a master's and a PhD in clinical psychology, post-grad in sex therapy, and of course her penthouse centerfolds, Z Doctor is more than qualified to prescribe her advice on love, women, and everything that comes in between. Partly why I decided to choose this area of you know, psychology and sexology is because I do love sex, and there's no question about it. And there's no question in Victoria's mind when it comes to the choices she's made. It's time for The Naked Truth with your host, clinical sexologist Dr. Bob Berkowitz, and the world's only clinical psychologist, certified sex therapist, playboy playmate, and penthouse pet of the year, Dr. Victoria Zadrop. Studies have shown that men unconsciously divide women in two categories, fast women for short-term flings and good women for long-term relationship. Does a woman doom herself if she sleeps with a guy on a first date? You know, I could not find one study which suggests that if you have sex on the first date or the second date, that it leads to a long-term relationship or a short-term relationship. I'm not buying it. It's I'm true. not buying it. It's true. Donald Simmons has shown that most men have a Madonna whore dichotomy, and that is they're good women that are marriage material, and they're fast women you sleep with, and that the more building resistance a woman has, the more virtuous she is. You know, the better she is for marriage. But you don't understand this from a man's point of view. If you have sex on the first date, he's thinking to himself, she finds me sexually attractive. Isn't, That's a big one for guys. Isn't he also thinking she's promiscuous? Not necessarily. That's what she does all the time. She's Not more likely to cheat. But, she, but he's also thinking that he finds you sexually attractive. So if we sleep on the first available. date, we have to make you believe that we only did it once, and that's with you. Oh, we're never going to believe that. <laughs> All right, well, listen, we want to take some questions from the audience. Josh, uh, what is your question for the doctors? Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, do all women fake it, and how can I tell? <laughs> well, that's actually a very common concern of men about women faking orgasms. <laughs> uh, and uh, research shows that about 80% of women fake orgasms 80% of the time. Men experience performance anxiety. Women experience what's called response anxiety. They, they feel, well, am I, I'm taking too long. I need, you know, am I giving the man what he wants? Maybe I should be, you know, more vocal. Maybe I should. So as part of it, they, they put so much pressure on themselves that they're often unable to, to achieve an orgasm. <laughs> I love that I'm word. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. What's, what's going on? Uh, or what's so, so funny? So um, is there a way to tell whether a woman... Uh, yes, that's what I'd like to not. know. Is there a way to tell? Uh, well, there are certain physiological signs. That, um, She's that, asleep. That's, that's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a problem. So many people have this very immature, uh, giggly attitude about sex when it's something that should be just discussed openly. Uh, my first question is, is there an actual rise in the number of these female teacher, uh, male student cases, or is it simply a matter of more reporting and attention to it? I think it's both the incidence and awareness that have gone up, and I think the tendency is not only in the United States, I, I've heard that it's worldwide. There's a recent case um, in Israel of a woman who has approached two young men through the internet, adolescents, mm -hmm. and has offered to coach them sexually. So it seems like it's a sort of worldwide epidemic, and I think partly it's the our obsession with youth and, and you know, desire of these women to recapture some of their youth. 
Hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Z. Dr. Z, how are you? I'm Sugar. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Nice to Please meet you. Please step this way. Moan zones are erogenous areas along the woman's body that get her hot and turned on and ready for sex without making it too obvious that you want sex. This area right here, right along the eye, is very, very sensitive. So you could kiss, caress right along here, touch the cheekbone, and get into the ear area right here. Let me show you. So basically just gently right there, just caress her. truly taking more control of their sex lives? Absolutely. Women are, are becoming more assertive in the bedroom, uh -huh. and they're also feeling more entitled to sexual pleasure. So they're seeking help more, they're exploring new products, uh -huh. they're really out there, you know, looking for ways to express themselves sexually. Well, let's go back to the, um, the orgasm trends. Tell me okay. about the trends. There are tons of great new things. Uh -huh. One of them, and you'll be hearing a lot about it on, uh, in the media, uh, on TV, this is called Zestra. And what it is is a botanical oil, it's all natural, and it's touted as the female Viagra. Oh, wow. Okay. I have tried it with my husband. And it uh, works. It works. The only issue I have with it is that it has a kind of a strange smell. What does it smell so, like? So it could be just my thing. Here, you can smell it. I think it's just, it's just not the most pleasant smell. It smells like strawberry oil. Yeah, but it, it has just a little bit of a, for me personally, but then I'm kind of sensitive to smells. <laughs> we'll be right <laughs> back. I think we need to be educated more about porn and the value of porn. Mm. I think people have mixed notion about it. Some people feel that uh, it's something that only single men should be doing, whereas there's a lot of couples that uh, do, do enjoy pornography. Mm. And so there's, a, there's still a lot of sex education that, that needs to be delivered to the masses, I think. I've always been comfortable with nudity, partly because I grew up in um, the USSR at the time of the sexual revolution. The 80s in Russia were the equivalent of um, like the 60s in the United States. So it was at the time like we were sort of the vanguard youth. They were constantly uh, pushing the barriers and um, you know. So I've always been comfortable with the nudity part. And I'm also writing a book, so that's sort of where I'm going with that. The next, uh, the Dr. Ruth of the new generation.